everyone. I hope you're all well. Welcome to another podcast. It's my favourite time of year. It's autumn, or beginning of autumn, um, end of summer, start of what we might call the grayling season. So I'm out nymphing for some uh, grayling today. Uh, one of the tributaries that flows into the main river. It's a beautiful afternoon. It's a lot warmer than I thought it was going to be, actually. Um, probably 20-ish degrees. It's all meadow land here. It's very, very pretty, if I'm honest. It's the large areas of meadow in the dales with the, uh, the trees on the, the surrounding hills, different stages of colour. And the sun's come out as well. And the berries are all out on the trees as well, ready to give the robins some food for winter. River's not as high as I thought it would be. I was expecting it to be coming down with a bit more pace and um, to fairly what I'd still call a, a summer level really. Um, but it's looking in good condition. I've loathed to do it, I hate doing it, but I've actually brought two rods with me. I don't like walking around with two rods, so I like to be pretty mobile, I'm not having to put one down. But the plan today is to run a, uh, a nymph through the, the shallower kind of glides and riffles, um, probably a killer bug, see how we get on with that. And then in places the river's very narrow and deep, um, and that's where I think uh, some of the grayling are going to be uh, down feeding. So I've also brought the uh, Euro nymph set up out as well with a... Uh, with them, um, what have we got on here? A killer jig, which is the jig version of the killer bug, and also um, our new uh, Euro shrimp as well, um, which has been catching really well during testing this year. So I'm going to start with the um, the traditional upstream nymph and outfit, nine foot four weight, just a killer bug, and we'll just uh, tap it out to some of the, the riffles um, straight ahead of me and uh, see what we can do. I've greased up the end of the the line as per usual just so I can see the line running down the river and now I'll be watching the line as it runs down the riffles just to see if it stops and then if it stops we'll strike so start with the riffles and see if there's any grayling in here and then like I say we'll uh, Keep working upstream. I'm going to put some uh, put some miles in today, I think, and just have a really good explore up and down the river. There we go, in straight away. Come off. Felt a nice fish. I just saw the um, the line suddenly stop in the riffle and was into a fish. That's it twisted off, unfortunately. Right, it's only a little bit of a, a riffle, that only worth five or ten casts, and there's probably only one or two fish in there which I've hooked. So I'm going to wind in already, pick up the other rod, which is going to be a pain today, and we'll see how long it takes before I forget it and I wander off up the river and um, realise I've left my rod. Right. It's a bit thin looking water there for a nymph probably it's probably worth a cast or two don't tread on your rod that's just worth a cast or two into here I've gone fairly strong on the leader. Five pound tip it today with these big bugs because I am going to be fishing fairly close to the bottom. So I want to make sure that um, if I do catch on a rock that I've, uh, I've got a bit of leverage. I don't want to be leaving flies around. And, and also there's some big fish in here. Obviously we're in the heart of wild rainbow country at the minute and there is some big wild rainbows which are obviously out of season I'm, I don't want to catch them but I want to make sure if I do hook one by accident and out of season I can very quickly bring it in unhook it and get it back so that's why I've gone a bit a bit heavier on the uh, 
on the tippet than I would on some of the streams. It is looking surprisingly low actually, with all the rain we've had. I thought it was going to be a bit heavier than this. A bit, a bit deeper, sorry. Right, let's have a good wander up then. That's looking a bit thin there. It still feels like summer if I'm honest. It's a, a warmish day. Looking round at the trees, there's the odd tree now that's got a burst of yellow and orange kind of protruding out of it, but mainly the trees are, are all greened up. This is all looking a bit thin. When I say a bit thin, I mean that the water's a bit slow and shallow and not really suitable for nymphing. So the water I'm looking for for nymph fishing to get down to those grayling is either deep or fast. Or deep and fast, even better. I'm not really so bothered about the, the uh, slower dry fly bits of water. There's still fish rising, but they're trout, so I'll be walking past anything that I see rising. Um, and just concentrate in on the on the nymphs trying to get down. There's a fair bit of fly life out. Actually, there's some large dark hollows, some stone flies, plenty of little midges. Here's a nice little uh, riffle and a nice little glide. So it's a good one for the nymph here. No, it's not quite deep enough to drop the euro in. In fact, oh, it might be actually. If it's worth the. Uh, Yes, it is. It's a nice, very fast, deep run here. So it's probably perfect for the Euronymph. So I'm going to drop the uh, river rod out of the way so I don't stand on it and just uh, pop the Euro out. So I've got a killer jig on the point and a Euro shrimp on the dropper. This looks just perfect here. So I'll start at the bottom of the run and uh, just drop it in. So with this, the idea is to use the weight of the flies and it's, it's contact really. You, I'm not really wanting to see the take as such, but it's something I'm hoping I'm gonna feel. So the idea is that the when the fish takes that nymph, you feel the take through the line. And the rods are very, very sensitive. So this is an 11 foot two weight rod. So when it's very light, very soft action. Oh. So here we've got a very fast seam of current running down and then kind of swirls round into a bend and there's a big back eddy. So I'm just going to explore as much of this as I can with the Euro outfit. Tapping those flies up and letting them run down. Imagine the, the fish will just be on the, the seam or they'll just be in that very fast water as it, as it comes down. Tap them up and then a nice straight line in contact with the flies as they run down. I don't know if I'm quite getting deep enough here. The idea of this is to get right down to where those fish are going to be. Yep, I'm in. Oh, it's off again. Lost two. That was just in the back eddy. Felt like a grayling. Um, twisting and turning on the end of the line. Okay, we'll leave that and move up. Just grab the other rod. So awkward carrying two rods. It's a real pain, but it really dictates it today. And that all looks a little bit, uh, again, a little bit thin and dry fly like that, so we'll leave that. Okay. Nice little, uh, almost old weir here. Old hatch pool weir, probably. And uh, the river squeezes through about 
or five or six foot quickly and then opens up into a very deep pool so this looks a good a good spot and I can get a nice cast upstream upstream right into the area where the water is being forced in lots of trees around here um, I've got to be careful with the cast just get myself into a good position first right it's going to be a That's it. You can see the bubble teams coming in where the current is bringing all the food and stuff down. And that's where I anticipate the grayling will be lying, picking off all those shrimp and caddis lava and nymphs as they trundle down the river. Right. I'm in here, yeah, if there's a grayling. out into the net lovely super on the killer bug only a little one this and the barber's hook's fallen out in the net so straight back in the river perfect right, see if there's anything else in there it's a big pool this so I would have thought it holds a lot of fish Potentially, anyway. The only issue with it is that, although on the surface it looks like the the the, uh, the current's flowing in in a very predictable way, actually, once the line's in there, the line is uh, twisting and swirling a bit. There's obviously a lot more complex currents going on than you first realise. So. It, not the best presentation of fly but you can see the river's boiling a bit and putting as many men's in as I can and also just uh, um, high sticking for keeping as much line off the water as I can as well to minimise the interaction of the fly line I and mean, that's the beauty of your own nymphing is there's no fly line floating on the water to drag anything about that's why the presentation is so good Try one just in the back eddy as well. There we are, just on the seam. To say it's the perfect fishing day, really. If only we'd had more days like this during the trout season. It's um, overcast, moderate temperature, fly life on the water. Um, we've had a bit of a, a rise as well of, uh, of water over the last week, so it's flushed through and stirred the fish up a bit uh, it's been pretty dry and low all trout season really not been ideal right well I've had one grayling out of here so mission accomplished oh this looks a nice little run racing through it's a bit uh, a bit shallow for the euro I think I think the tungsten's going to hit bottom on that but I'll be able just to flick the nymph out I think It's a bit shallow all around there, I think. I'm going to get a, anything in there. Yeah, it's a little bit too shallow, I'll leave that. 
looks a bit fast. I think we'll leave that as well. Yeah, but there's a nice big race further up. Right, onwards and upwards. So I lost a couple and had one little grayling so far. We're just coming up to some of the farms now. And there's some nice deep fast runs further up here, which I'm looking forward to getting the Euro nymph on. Try not to catch the, the net on the barbed wire fence. Last time I was walking down this path, my uh, my net, which is hung on my back, got caught on the barbed wire. But obviously, it's on a, a cord, so I didn't notice, and it stretched. <laughs> it suddenly pulled me back. One of the uh, the lovely things about this river is the way it meanders through the meadows. It's not like a long straight river, it, it twists and turns and it splits and off into side streams and comes back together. So you've got everything from kind of tiny little small stream fishing right up to a river that's kind of, you know, 40 foot across I guess. Right, we're up to the bridge here, so again it's uh, ideal for the Euro nymph here. Just drop it in, try and must drop it in at the bridge and then trundle it down. Just, I'm just firing the nymphs up towards the bridge, holding the line nice and high. So, oh, there's a take, holding the rod nice and high, and then keeping tension in the mono and just uh, waiting to feel that bang on the tip of the rod. Like I said, these two weights are so sensitive, you, you feel everything, every little take. And because I'm fishing jig hooks as well, they are designed to, to fish with the hook point up. So when you do get a bump on the bottom, you um, you hopefully don't snag up fully, you just feel the flies almost bumping and then I've touched bottom a couple of times so I know that I'm uh, I know that I'm getting down to the zone. Oh that was a take there. Actually took them on the drop that Do that. Let's move up above the bridge and see if there's anything lurking higher up. Let's check these flies, yeah they look fine. All the sheep are out having a good feed. To the farm now. Now I don't want to cross the bridge and have a fish from the other side. No, there's a lovely run just up here, so let's go and have a go at that. Making sure I close all the gates behind me properly. Last thing I want is the sheep to be running around where they shouldn't be. Here we go, here's some some proper water up here so the grayling is a really good run. Alright then what we're gonna to do to tackle this Euro I think very deep and then maybe the the uh, Euro it here and then in the glide and then further up in the riffle is where I'll get the nine footer out and 
run the, the bug down the riffles. Right, I'm going to prop the rod up against the fence this time to try and avoid any mishaps. There's quite a bit of weed on it. Maybe not as deep as I think here. It might be a case of getting the, the, uh, the nine footer on it straight away. Oh, it looks good. to get out in the flow a bit more. No. Oh, that's better. I want these nymphs moving down the river with a bit of pace. I don't want them just sinking. Yep, yeah, I'm in. Feels like a little out of season brownie this, so I'm gonna try and bring it in quickly. It could be a rainbow. Yeah, it's a little wild rainbow. There we go. Oh, it's taking the uh, Euro shrimp there. Lovely. I'm not going to touch it, just clipped him straight back from the net. It's a strange with these wild rainbows, they're out of season obviously because it's a trout and we don't want to catch them but bizarrely they're actually spring spawning fish. So they're not even going to be spawning through winter anyway but because they're just a bit of an anomaly from where we are in the country obviously it's not taken into account with the seasons it's just uh, the way it is. So as I've had a trout from there I'm going to move. I don't want to catch any more. Whoa, getting a dab on. I have to admit I'm, uh, I'm fairly miserable when it comes to weather. This is too, too, I'd much prefer this to have frost on the ground and be a bit bleak. I'll be in my element then, but uh, I'm not particularly keen on. I like it cold and miserable and then I'm happy. So we've got a, a very strong Tonga current coming in here. I'm going to try and focus on the really, that really fast current. Tap them nymphs up and bringing the rod round fairly quickly as well. And what I'm doing is just sensing using the rod tip where the bottom is and that way because my leader changes colour it goes from uh, pink through to clear I can gauge that uh, depth and then I can hold the rod at the right height so my flies are just off the bottom Oh, I've just walked through some wild mint there. Beautiful smell. Lovely that when you 
you're wading through the bank and you just crash through a bit of wild mint and the, the smell is so pungent. Oh, I had a little bump there. I don't think that was weird. I think that was a fish. Right, I fished this seam pretty hard. Not on any take here, so let's just line that in a bit and then I think I can get down a bit further up. Again, it looks like an old weir here that's uh, forming the run of water. Yes, yeah, so I should be able to get in down here and drop one across. Right, big weir coming up, big open bit of river. There's always going to be a fish holding spot, so I'm going to wander up and have a look at that. Well, I don't know about you, but it's been a a uh, I'll be honest, it's been a pretty poor year for where we've been to this year. Low water and cold at the beginning of the season low and warm and bright through the middle of it we have finally had a good lift of water and some rain literally the last two days of our trout season so not much use really but it has stirred the salmon up a bit i was out on the tyne a week or two ago and it was that low and bright and horrible the fish were just stale, there's the odd salmon splashing about in the pool but they weren't taking the fly, they're just splashing around. So um, of course, typical me, I come back and we have a good dump of rain and I see the next week on the beat I was fishing there was six or five or six fish caught in one day. And we're, well, that's just how it is. Okay. Big open weir pool here, so well, I say weir pool, it's an old weir, it's not do much anymore, and it's just forming a, a big ripple, really. But it doesn't look too deep, so I think the tungsten's going to be a bit uh, tungsten's going to be a bit too heavy for here, so again, I'm going to have to cast a bit funny handed just to get some kind of casting. River's pretty wide here, it's a good 40 foot across and there's like channels carved in it the different current scenes so if you've listened to my podcast before you know I'm very keen on focusing my fly and working it down the seams of current where the, the food's going to be travelling so that's what I'm doing, I've got two or three to choose from here different kind of seams I'm fishing on the steam really close to this, the bank I'm fishing from there. One more cast here, I think, and then. I just wander upstream a touch. That's where I want to be. I'm 
All right then. Let's go a bit further up. I guess this river is it's a limestone stream, so it's probably more akin to it's not a chalk stream, it's, it's not exactly like a chalk stream, but it's it's similar-ish. Um, compared to the other rivers that we have around here, which are we have all sorts around here, we've got these limestone streams, we've got very upland kind of boulder strewn slippy rivers you know the, with the smooth round boulders and we've got meandering kind of halfway houses gravelly bit of everything in the peak district oh bit of shade at last under the trees. Yeah, it's not too shallow there, it's very low. A lot lower than I thought it would be. I've got some very fast stuff here, so I'm just going to drop the, the tungsten in here and just have a couple of pulls down. about six centimeters long oh lost that one there's a few fish in there but not seeing what they are yet. Yeah, I'm in there. This is a grayling. Nice one as well, actually. And that one's took the killer jig. Super duper. That's in a very fast, uh, fast water. Good. What's well, the right species? To be honest, that felt like a. Uh, trout at first, it put up a real scrap. And I'm just tapping the nymph back up where there's the, obviously where there's one grayling there's a chance of more, so now I've found one I'll put a few more casts in. It's very 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 fast water, almost in um, what you call rapid this really. It's perfect for the Euro because it's not really fishable in any other way. Kingfish are just zoomed past as well, it's all happening. Oh, 
Oh, and it zoomed back the other way. Yeah, we're in again. God, the nymph maniac doing its job here. Such a rod, this. Absolute beauty for playing fishing. What have we got here? Oh, it's an absolute beauty of a grayling. Oh, my word. Do not want to lose this fella. Oh, and he's in. That's the stunner. On the Euro shrimp as well. Absolute beauty. Off she goes. Super, right. Remember that spot. Well, that was a super fish. I think that wasn't far off two pounds, that. And it put up a real scrap in that current. A real scrap. So the flies I'm using today are all fairly simple. The uh, Sawyer's killer bug obviously on the upstream nymph been set up. Um, floating line and about 14, 15 foot a leader. And the Sawyer's killer bug, for those that don't know it, it's just a bit of wool and wire really. Invented by Frank Sawyer for grayling fishing. Um, so simple setup on the river on the upstream uh, nymphing setup. The Euro nymphing a bit more fiddly. I've got a uh, obviously 11 foot number two weight rod um, and then I've got some pink mono with a little tippet ring and then about six foot of fluorocarbon. Um, it's quite pricey fluorocarbon, it's really fine but strong line so it gets down nice and deep. And um, on the point I've got a killer jig which is our version of the Sawyer's killer bug but in jig form specifically for this type of fishing. Brilliant grayling fly. And then the dropper we've got our Euro shrimp which is a very slim line shrimp pattern. Again really designed for this kind of fishing. So between the two setups I can cover the very deep bits, the fast bits, the bits where I can't cast one rod I can cast the other. The lovely thing about, again, the Euro setup is you can you can allow the flies to go past you a bit without them swinging because there's no fly line. They uh, they don't drag around. Well, that's been that's me done. It's been a a lovely little session. Well, I've had four or five grayling, a really good one as well. A um, couple of out, out of season uh, rainbows as well, which went straight back. But thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you for listening. For more information on our guided fly fishing or lessons, it's www.peaksflyfishing.com or for our flies and tackle, it's shop.peaksflyfishing.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye bye.